Today we're going to talk about the renal system and we're going to mainly focus on the uh, anatomy and histology you know, aspects of the your renal physiology. That's what we'll be um, talking about today in this particular lectures. Okay, so I've already pre-done some of the graphs here. Okay, um, so these graphs are probably anatomically not correct, but I just made it so that way as we go, it's going to make a lot more sense to you, okay? So, there are, so today we're focusing obviously on the kidneys, right? So, if you look at this, I try to draw this as a dive, uh, this one as a ribs, okay? So, this one's, I particularly made this as ribs here, okay? And this structure right here, this is my liver, okay? And then, if you see, if I do a, if I make a half of this, I'm going to call this side as my right side, okay? Let me just write down here. Okay, this is going to be my right side here. And then I'm going to call this as my left side, okay? Now, so if you look at this, the kidney of my right side, okay? And as you know, the kidney is a retroperitoneal organ, okay? What is retroperitoneal organ means? Basically means that kidney is covered by this peritoneum, okay? And then it has this from the ventral side, from the from the ventral side. That's the reason why this kidney is known as your retroperitoneal organ, okay? And if you see this kidney here, this right kidney, if you see this kidney right here, see, because of the liver is coming down here, that's why this right side of the kidney is slightly lower. Okay, so let me just write it down here. So your right side of the kidney, its right kidney is going to be slightly lower than your this left kidney okay and this is my left kidney and usually what happens is that this kidney is sort of like merging through this thoracic cavity sorry not this yeah this this rib cage okay so usually this right kidney if I have to be if you want to be very very clear is around located around like your two up ribs okay and then this left kidney is slightly higher which is around from like we could say 10th to 11th ribs okay so left kidney is slightly higher than the right kidney okay and the reason why is because of the the liver portions is sort of like suppressing this right side of the kidney okay that's something you have to remember now now if you remember that here, there's also like one more organs that is also good to see on, on top of this here. This is going to be, it's going to look like a, like a pizza type of shape. And that's going to be my suprarenal gland, okay? This is going to be suprarenal gland right here. Okay, you get to see this on top of this, on the superior margins. And the other one is a little bit up here. This is going to be, and a little bit, this structure is going to be a little bit varies on the left side of the kidney, okay? It looks sort of like, that they look a little differently also, okay? And then obviously you also want to remember, if you want to remember some other organs, okay? Like around this area portion right here, like this portion, where you also see one more organs, okay? And that is going to be my spleen, okay? Now, one of the things like, you guys have to remember, guys, is that this kidneys are located in posteriorly, okay? So usually when you examine, we're posteriorly, we have to look at the posters on the back, okay, to, to see the kidneys. So, so right here, if we go and talk about the structures of the kidney, obviously this is my two bean shape of the kidney, okay? And these are like usually like, you know, 10, centim 10 centimeter in length and like five centimeters in wide, okay? The very, very small size of the kidney. And if you look at this kidney right here, the structures, what I'm going to main focus today, like here in the structure, is that this this upper area of this kidney, we call them a superior margin, and this one, or superior surface, or, and this, or you can even say a pickle surface, and then this part right here, we can call this as a marginal, and then this is a lateral zone, okay? And then, if you look at these indentations, you see, these indentations, we simply call this indentation, I'm going to label this as, we call them a renal hyalium. Okay, the renal hyalium. And the importance of renal hyalium is, this is the where there is an entry and exit, a lot of blood vessels, okay? And if you go from the anterior to posteriors, how 
how the blood vessels, what is the blood vasculature. So if I write down what are the anterior and posterior relationship is, the first thing you get to see is the renal vein, okay, from if you go from anterior to posterior, okay, then after that you see a renal artery, okay, then you see a lymphatics, okay, and then you see then after that you see, okay, sympathetic, like those nerves, okay, sympathetic trunk, and then you see a renal pelvis, okay. This is the anterior and posterior relationship of the hilum, okay? And if we talk about the, the renal system right here, this renal, okay, obviously we talk about retroperitoneal organs. This renal, renal, this renal, this outer layer of the renal surface is covered by, let's make this as another layer right here. This renal is covered by something called renal capsules, okay? This is a dense layer of the renal capsule that is covered on this area. And this is called, the your kidney is covered by the, the capsule, this outer layer. It's a dense, it's a connective tissue, okay? And this is called my renal capsules, okay? Now, that renal capsule, so this is a renal capsule. I'm going to write down renal capsules, okay? And then, on top of that, there's also one more layer is there. We call them as adipose capsules, or you can even say perirenal fat, okay? What do we call this as? Okay, I'm just going to make a one line here, okay? And this another layer of the cells are going to be mine. I'm going to write it down here, which is called my perirenal fat, or simply you can call this as adipose capsules, okay? Adipose capsules, okay? And then, these are very, very important because these adipose capsules and also oh, what they do is that, you know, they, they, they are preventing kidneys from any sort of like traumas, okay? So they're very, very important roles they play, play, play a role into. And then one of the most important other one you get to see on top of. So this, uh, so before even I go, this renal, you see, this uh, adipose capsules or perirenal fat that is covering this renal capsule. The renal capsule is the outer layer of the kidney, okay? The innermost layer of the kidney is going to be your renal capsules. And what is covering the renal capsule is going to be the adipose capsules or perirenal fat. And on top of that, you know, what is covering the other, the other surface of the area will make this is in a, let me make this in this color. This part right here though, at the outer part, this part right here, okay? This part, okay, which is covering both of them, the fibrous capsules, and also it's covering the adipose capsule, and that is called, I'm going to write it down here, which we call this as a renal fascia, okay? And they also call it as a gertose fascia, okay? And what is the most importance of these renal fascias and this gertose fascias and all these fats, this adipose capsule renal fascia, is that it is basically preventing kidneys from like any sort of traumas or it is sort of like preventing uh, the kidney to move around, okay? So it preventing from the, uh, it preventing to cause something called floating kidney, okay? So as we slip around, as we move around, kidney doesn't sift, okay? So these is protective layers, these are protective layer that is providing to the kidneys, okay? There are three outer layers that you get to see in the kidneys, okay? And we'll talk about the one of your cross sections, we'll talk about the what is inside. I'm just covering the outer layer right now, okay? Now, after this, Okay, what are we going to talk about? And we'll talk about the inner right now. I'm just going to focus on the outer right now, okay? Now, what we have to talk about is the blood vessels, okay? And if we see this, this blue here, I drew this as an inferior vena cava, okay? And this big here, big branch is aorta, okay? And then, you know, your kidneys get the supplies from renal artery, right? And then, what happens is that this aorta give a rise around the, at the level of like, at the level of L1 to L2, okay? And usually when you want to see, let's say, at the high limb of this, around this L, usually they say L2, okay? Because remember guys, if you remember GI system, there is from T2 up to L1, there's a aorta gives one more branch called celiac trunk, and the celiac trunk supplies all those gastrointestinal uh, systems, right? It gives out the celiac trunk, it gives out left gastric artery, splenic artery, common hepatic, com uh, common hepatic artery, right? And those arteries, right? And then from L1 or L2, it gives a rise to this artery called renal artery, right? And L3 gives out some superior mesenteric artery, and there is a, all this 
L4 inferior mesenteric artery and so okay so this L2 artery let's make this is here okay right here they're giving a branch of branch here now let's make this as they're giving a branch right here from here you're giving and it's coming down like this okay so this is my renal artery right here and this L, L, at the level of L2 and then this is also giving another right here at the level of L2 okay so if you look at the right renal artery versus left renal artery right a right renal artery is slightly longer than left renal artery is because it has to pass us through the inferior vena cava because of that right renal artery is slightly longer than left renal artery okay and that's what it is gonna do okay and then when it goes to the right renal artery it's gonna give us segmental arteries okay it's gonna give us five segmental di different arteries Okay, that's where it's going to go. It's going to, and we'll talk about that. But let me erase this part and we'll come and we'll talk about a little bit different. Okay, this R is very important. And then we'll also have to talk about this is that this renal artery okay let's let's finish the renal artery and we'll talk we'll come back to the vein this renal artery what happens is that it gives five five different branches okay it goes like this i'll make a five just for now one two three four and then five okay these five are called five segmental arteries okay the renal artery gives up and it goes in both the directions okay it gives out right here one two three four and then five okay and what are these five these are our super high yield tenoid but i'm just going to mention it just for you guys you know so if you want to remember you can remember but i highly doubt it they will test you on this but i'm just going to write it down here okay so one of those the branch of the renal artery is called apical artery okay then apical segmental artery and the other one is called you have a superior okay inferior artery okay which is actually this is called if you want to be very very clear we call them as a anterior because it's supply supplying the anterior anterior superior artery okay other one is called anterior anterior inferior okay artery so you have a you have a one here you have two here you have a three here and then four you have you have a posterior okay and then five you have a inferior segmental artery this is s star for segmental segmental artery so look so the renal artery it gives a five different segmental artery so that's what it is giving out it is supplying the and it and names of these blood vessel tells you exactly where it is supplying. Apical means on the top here, and it is also going to anterior, anterior in the superior aspects of the kidney, and then it is also supplying the anterior inferior part, and then it going to the you have the back of the kidney also, right? So it's also by the back of the kidney here. So it also by the posterior side and also by the inferior side. And these are five different segmental arteries, okay? That's what it gives a rise to. And the segmental arteries will further branch into it, okay? If you guys come back here, let's make this as, if I have to quickly talk about this, okay, let me just quickly mention this about it. Okay, if I just make this kidney right here, okay, so let's make this kidney, you know, like my, my, my down here. I'll make another kidney right here, okay? If I make this my kidney right here, okay, let's just make it a little differently, okay? If I make this a kidney, okay, what happens with this kidney is like, okay really what happens is that let's make this as one renal artery is coming here okay me let's make this renal artery and you give one branches okay which is a one segmental let's make this as one segmental artery okay i'm just drawing this in a okay actually let me draw it in the red for you guys okay so you guys know what i'm talking about all right so basically it's coming and then let's make this as okay here we'll make a, a kidneys pyramids too okay make two pyramids right here okay just for the understanding and we'll talk about it in more detail so what happens is the kidney comes in right so they're from aorta right here let's make this as aorta it giving a branch of renal artery right this is my renal artery right here okay and it give you this branch which is called segmental branch it give you five but i'm just gonna focus on one and this segment branch just go that goes like this right and it be when it when it when it give gets here in the pyramids it, it gives the branches this branch is called okay i'm going to write this down this branch is called interlobar artery 
Okay, it's going to give on interlobar arteries, and then this interlobar arteries, what happens with this, is going to is going to go and make arcuit like this. Okay, what do you call this? And this is going to become your know, this interlobar artery is going to become your arcuit arteries. You see what I mean? So this segment artery is for the device interlobar artery because it's supplying the interlobar inside the lobar here, right? And then it's going to make arch of it. That's why we call them arcuate arteries. And this arcuate artery is going to, what it's going to do is that, okay, there are other, other pyramids here too, okay? So this arcuate arteries, what it's going to do, it's going to do, it's going to radiate, okay? So it's going to, because this surface area, if we talk about this, this inside of the blood, inside of the renal, okay? So what happens is that it gives, like it's going to radiate like this, okay? Like this. So because it's radiating like this, we call them as a cortical, okay, we'll write it down, this as, we call them as a, okay, cortical radiate artery, okay? Or simply we call them as a, okay, let me write it down in a black hole. They call this as a interlobular artery, okay? Okay, you know, guys, Please don't get confused with interlobular artery with interlobular artery, okay? Interlobular or cortical radiate artery are the same thing. They are just, this interlobular artery is a branch of your arcuate arteries. Yes, arcuate artery, right? And this, this cortical radiate artery gives branch, okay, to what? to these beautiful organs, okay, and this is, by the way, this is going to cortex right now, okay, this part here is cortex, and this part is all the medulla right here, right, so this, this cortical radial artery will branch into and make a efferent arterioles, that's what it will make, okay, so, and this cortical, then after that, this is efferent arterioles right here, then this efferent arterioles make a lots of loop around like this, okay, and make what? give a rise to capillaries and we call them as a glomero glomerulus capillaries that's what it becomes and then this glomerular capillaries is going to further come together and become your efferent arterioles okay efferent arterioles and then again this efferent arterioles will break down into another capillaries which is called peritubular capillaries Okay, and then from the peritubular capillaries, what is going to happen is that this peritubular capillaries will become vein. Now after that, we have to draw you know, blue colors. Okay, it will become your your vein. Okay, and your venules. And from the venules, what will become? It will go become your cortical radiated vein. And then after that, cortical radiated veins, it's going to go back. What is going to be interlobar vein? Sorry, arcuate vein. Okay. So cortical radiated vein, look, that's a cortical radiated vein, then it's going to become your inter arcuate veins, sorry, arcuate veins. From the arcuate vein, what is it going to become? Interlobar vein, from the interlobar veins, then after that, become the segmental veins, and then it's going to be renal vein. Then it will become renal vein, and it will going to go drain into the inferior vein. Okay, wow. So this is just the branches I'm telling you, okay, guys? So let's quickly talk about the renal artery, gives up five segment or five different segmental arteries, right? Those each each segmental artery give out rises. It becomes the interlobar artery. From the interlobar artery, it will become arcuate arteries. And the arcuate arteries breaks down and gives something called interlobular artery or cortical radiate arteries, okay? And then that's cortical radiate artery divides and gives rise to afferent arterioles. And then afferent arterioles further divides and gives a stuffed up network, which is a glomerulus capillaries. You will talk about that too. And then that will again come back and become efferent arterioles. And efferent arterioles even again become peritubular capillaries. And then from there, the peritubular capillaries becomes your cortical radiate vein, or you can even simply I mean venules and cortical radiate vein or interlobular vein. Then after that, arcuate vein. From the arcuate vein, it's going to become your interlobar vein and then after that it's going to become your segmental vein and then your renal vein okay so and the renal vein will drain into the inferior vena cava because this brings a deoxygen of blood so this is just how it's going to work but we'll talk more about this too okay and it'll make more sense but this i just wanted to quickly tell you this but now 
if you got this, the renal veins, okay, so if you got the idea of the renal veins, so I quickly draw here, if you look at this now, let's make this a renal vein right here, okay, I'll erase this, so renal, if you look at this renal vein right here, this is my renal vein, okay, if you look at the renal vein, and then if you also another renal vein, if you look at this now, you see how the renal artery, you, my, my left renal artery is shorter than the, my right one, but if you like that, look at like my vein, okay, this left renal vein, okay, it's longer than the right renal veins, okay, because it is going, it is passing through the aorta, okay, that is a difference as you get to see, and you can physically see this too, now, what is the other, what is the other most important thing is the drain is, ultimately, okay, right renal vein is going to bring deoxygen in the blood and directly in, in, into vena cava, but the left renal vein had a little more exceptions. What is that is that this organs, left renal veins, what it does is that it also brings some of the blood from this suprarenal gland, okay, and then it drains into this left renal vein, okay, and also the gonadal, gonadal veins, like for instance, if you're female, ovarian veins, okay, or if you're ovarian veins, or even testicular veins, the left side of the testicular from the left ovarian vein, they actually drain into the left renal vein, and then that left renal vein will ultimately drain into a, your inferior vena cava, okay, that is something that you have to remember, because they do test you on that, okay, now, now, all the things that we also have to talk about is that you see these guys, the structures, we'll talk, we'll come back to this. Because there is a, Reno has this area, okay, this side, okay, let's make this here. Here there is a, this part is called cortex, okay, this area is called cortex. And here there is a medulla here, okay, there's a medulla, okay. And then from this is this, right, you see this in a green color, this is called ureter, okay, what is it called, ureter. This is called ureter. Okay, this ureter, what happens, it, it, this gives, it becomes, or when it gets here, it becomes renal pelvis, okay. This area is going to become your renal pelvis, okay. And then this renal pelvis gives rise to so-called major calyx, okay. It gives about like two or three major calyx, okay. And then this one major calyx give out maybe another two or three minor calyx, okay. So there is a, okay, let's just write, this ureter goes, gives right, renal pelvis, okay. And this renal pelvis goes gives right two or three so-called major calyx, okay, major calyx, and then this one or one this from out of each major calyx it give out two or three minor calyx, okay. That's what it gives out. And the pur the purpose of this side is that the urine drains. From here, this place area is called renal papillae, okay, and then there is a minor calyx is receiving this, receiving, and this minor calyx is will drain into major calyx, okay, it will go, so urine will drain from, okay, from the renal papillae to minor calyx, and from the minor calyx it will drain to major calyx, and the renal pelvis, and it will drain into the ureter, and the ureter will bring all the way down and drain into, this is a my bladder, okay, that's how usually urine comes into the bladder, okay, that's how uni kidney usually filter out, okay, and everybody knows that kidney filters, and the kidney is one of the, one of the main, one of the primary functions of the kidney is the formation of the urine, right, but that's something that you have to remember, right, and if you look at this, right, so this is how usually you work, now, this is bringing all this urine and emptying into the bladder, okay, now, and we'll talk about a little more detail when we get there, okay, but I just wanted to get this concept right. I'm just trying to focus on anatomy right now. That's what it is. You know, whenever we talk about the anatomy, okay, there are a couple of things that I have to mention. We often hear about the the kidney stones, okay, there are usually three primary sources where kidney stones can get lodged into it, okay, and that can prevent, you know, outflow of your urinary system, so, right? So, Usually, there are three places where the kidney stones can lodge into it. And we have to talk about what are those places because we're talking the anatomy. So we have to talk about that. So if you see, guys, right here. Okay, if you see right here, okay. You see, like, as I said, right, you have this. Let's write it down here. You have a minor cat. Like, I'm going to make this one, okay. So I'm just going to make, okay. I'll just make, I'll just make a couple of pyramids right here. Look, I'll make this one pyramid here, and I'll make this another pyramid right here, okay? And I'll make another pyramid right here. Okay, I made a three for you guys, okay? These are my pyramids, okay? 
And this area, I call this as a renal papillae, okay? And really what happens is that it will bring up... Look. It will happen. See how this one, this portion from here to here, this is minor calyx, okay? It is going and receiving the urine. Then this becomes your major calyx, okay? Minor calyx. And then after that, it will become your renal pelvis, okay? Then it will become your ureter like this, okay? Now, this is what... This is what is going to happen right here. See, as you go from minor calyx to major calyx, what ha what is happening to the diameters of the structure? They're getting bigger, right? Is because they're getting a bigger, the stones would not able to get lodged into it. Because as as the stones comes in, what happens is that these places, these areas are getting bigger until it's a renal pelvis. Okay, till renal pelvis, all the, the structure are bigger. The, uh, it increases the diameter. That's why normally stones doesn't get lodged into this area. But after renal pelvis, what happens is that uh, these structures get smaller and that's ureter. Okay, so at the junction, these places called junctions are so basically right here. Okay, there's a junctions. Okay, let's make this a ureter. There's a junction between the renal pelvis, okay, renal pelvis, and then ureter, okay, because you, as, because you, because from the pelvis to ureter, what happens, the ureter is going to, the diameter of the structure will change it, is because of that, there is a very, very potential or higher chance that the stone can get lost into that, okay, and we call that junction, we basically call that, call that a utero, okay, pelvic junction, okay, that is like down here around that portions, okay? Around that portions, uh, the, uh, the because pelvis is going to become the renal pelvis is going to become ureter, right? At the junction, because it's going to get smaller, that's the one place that's gonna can get get a stone can get lost into, it, right? But let's say the stone did not get lost into it. The small can pass pass it from the utero pelvic junctions, okay? Then it has to go some other places. As you come down here, look at this, this aorta, there's a bifurcation, there are bifurcations happens from the common, common iliac artery, right? The inferior vena cava also there. And then what happens is that if you see this area right here, this is around this area, which is called the number two. This is this is called pelvic brim. Okay? The pelvic brim. What happens is around that around the pelvic area, pelvic brim. What happens is that because of the blood vessels are also by uh, splitting out, this this ureter. What happens? It get little narrower. Okay, the diameters of the ureter decrease a little bit around the because of the because of because of the pelvic. Okay, and we call them as a pelvic brim. The, and because this ureter diameter becomes, I also made it slightly smaller. So slightly get decreases, that is another site for kidney stone to get lost. And that is called pelvic brim junctions. Okay, that is a second site where stones can get lost. Okay. And and then third is the most important one, which is that as it coming down here, really what happens is that at the at the entry of the ureter to the bladder, the junction between the you uh, the ureter to the bladder, okay, this this ureter even gets further constricted or narrow or very very tiny so this is this is the this is the biggest opening here this is a moderate and then you can see the smallest opening okay so even very very tiny stone can get actually lodged into it and these are usually the common site uh, for the stone can get lodged into it and this is the junction between the the ureter and then also with the bladder okay we call them is that okay what is this? Utero, okay? Utero vesicle junctions, okay? So we call them as utero vesicle junctions. And this is the area of this slide, okay? So these are the three common sites where the stones can get lodged into it, okay? So, and then if the somehow, let's say stone gets here, okay? Then, it can easily pass out from the urinary system because I mean you're not urinary system from your from your private parts. It, it can go out because remember urethra is going to be larger than uh, this ureter. Okay.